Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. And welcome today to my review of what could be the most controversial watch I have ever reviewed on the channel. Now I often talk about polarizers or Marmite watches, stuff that people generally love or hate with nothing in between. And I'm fairly confident that today's watch is gonna be one of those watches. And to add extra controversy, for the first time ever, I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt in an intro. There might be a good reason for that though. It might be because today I'm reviewing the Stratton Cuffbuster, a watch unlike any watch I've ever seen, never mind reviewed. Now, you saw the pop up, I'm sure. This video is sponsored by Stratton. These are now available to purchase from the Stratton website. I will therefore leave a link to that website in the description of the video. But look, I am not here to sell you this watch today, far from it. I'm just here to show you this watch and then to read your comments about it. I think that Kyle, the brand owner of Stratton, is well aware of what he has here. He has been showing this one on various social media platforms for about the last six months. And the comments, like the watch, have been, shall we say, polarizing. The quote on the thumbnail today is a quote from one of these social media platforms, a quote available on the Stratton website, along with a number of others. Kyle's tongue is very much in his cheek with this one. He knows this watch isn't for everybody, but I'm sure he hopes that enough of you see the funny side and do indeed buy one. Let's flip the camera and have a look at it. Before I show you any more of this weird and wacky watch, I think a bit of context is necessary here today. It's a Stratton watch now, but it hasn't always been a Stratton design. This was originally released, not as the Cuff Buster though, by the way, by a brand called De Sotos in 1972, long since deceased. Kyle does this, he finds designs that he likes from the past and resurrects them, and dare I say it, Strattonizes them in the present. So what he's done is taken that original design, used modern materials, the Stratton look, a modern movement, twisted the registers around 90 degrees, and here you have the Stratton Sprint, AKA the Cuff Buster. It is available in six different colors, including brown that I have here, the most super 70s color of the lot. However, bright orange and turquoise are available if you wanna give an old look a modern twist. Price on these, 349 US dollars for the first 500 units. Plenty of those first 500 units are available at the time of recording. Link in the description, of course. But what on earth am I gonna even do with this thing today? It just looks so incongruous sitting down there on my piece of wood, sticking out to one side. It looks like it had a growth spurt in not quite the right direction. So I don't think this type of B-roll review is suitable today. I will give you a couple more macro close-ups when discussing the dial and hands, etc. later on, but this one needs context. And that context is, of course, on the wrist. Even then, it looks weird. There is no other way of describing it, although I'm sure a few of you will come up with a few other ways of describing it in the comments. Like I said, can't wait to read a few of those. Yeah, it just looks odd unless you are wearing this one with a cuff as it was intended. So here it is then, here is the cuff buster underneath the cuff of one of the three long sleeve shirts that I actually own. I've got a black one, a white one, and a pink one, and I chose the black one today for fairly obvious reasons. This is what it was designed for it, so that it pokes out beyond the cuff, whether that's a shirt or a jumper. Originally it was designed for pilots, they could glance down at their wrist and not have to pull back their shirt sleeves to see the time. Today, very much more a novelty item. I can't see too many pilots grabbing one of these to wear whilst piloting their planes. But there you are, the cuff buster in context underneath a cuff. And there we are, the pocket shot, nice and early today. I even put on some jeans to match my long sleeve shirt. I was boiling hot when I recorded this particular piece of footage. That's the idea. It slips out the end of the cuff so you can still read the time. Et voila, the cuff buster. 
All right, I suppose I better get on with the rest of it, the dimensions, the specifications, etc. Now, the watch I have here is a prototype. Uh, Kyle sent it to me in one of these Stratton travel rolls. I assume, though, it comes with the same standard brown coffin as all the others. And there you go, it only just squeezes on a cushion. And there we are, it does have a very Stratton look about it, this sprint, even though the design is not originally by Stratton themselves. All right, are you ready for the diameter dimension? I measure this one on my calipers at, drum roll please, 61.4 millimeters. In fairness though, lug to lug today is only 37 and the lugs actually sit in board of the case. So perhaps it is suitable for smaller wrists after all. Now thickness, less than seven mil for the case, but once you add in the movement and the crystal, etc., and the bezel, it comes in at just under 13. I measure it at 12.9. 20 millimeter lug width. As supplied on the Rally leather strap, it weighs 102 grams. 100 meters of water resistance screw down crown. Now today, it's a cracking piece of glass. Look at that kind of television shape, but it's not sapphire. You don't get a piece of sapphire that shape for that money. It is a K1 hardened mineral crystal, but it is sapphire coated, so that should avoid scratches. The movement in the back, Value in the original, this one contains a Seiko VK67 Mecha Quartz modified to fit. You can't see it though, nobody wants to see a Mecha Quartz. What you can see is a very nice racing themed case back etched with what I believe is Kyle's own Alfa Romeo. He owns a race prepared Alfa Romeo GTV and there are plenty of videos on the internet of him really fanging the thing. It is a cracking looking car, beautifully prepared, and he loves to stick it on the case pack of his own watches. Why wouldn't you? So the VK67 has been rotated 90 degrees to fit in this case so that it has effectively a bull head pusher layout. Permanently ticking small second at the three, whereas it would normally be at the six, we have a 60 minute chrono timer at the nine and a date at the six, whereas it would normally be at the three if the movement was the right way round, if you see what I mean. So the first pusher starts the chrono timer, five ticks per second because it's a Seiko Mecha Quartz, top pusher again to stop and bottom pusher, if you will, the right hand pusher to reset. You'll get about two, two and a half years out of the battery in one of these. Very easy to change, just four screws on that case back. Battery will cost you about 50 cents when the time comes. Super low maintenance, super reliable and relatively accurate, plus or minus 15 seconds per month, which is the quartz standard. The perforated rally strap will look very familiar to fans of the brand. Cal uses this on a number of his other models. In this case, 20 mil between the lugs, Stratton branded hardware, double retainers, and a nice color matching kind of camel color to go with the brown dial. If you want to put your cuff buster on a bracelet, you can do, you can purchase a 20 mil bracelet from the Stratton website and it'll fit just fine. All right, let's have a brief look at the dial and hands and let's get back to some outdoor macro to do it. Indices are applied, double baton at 12, singles everywhere else, and there's an applied frame around the date complication down there at the six. Now the two sub-registers look like they're recessed, but they're not. It's a trick of the eye because they sit within a raised section. Branding is kept to a minimum. As always, Strattons are never over-branded. Just a simple silver S and then sprint in that Stratton italicized font above the date complication. There is a tachymeter scale and minute markers printed if you are mad enough to use this one to try and actually time anything. And there is a fairly strong sunburst effect to the majority of the dial surface. I love the hands on these, a prominent orange central chronograph hand, cracking little sub-register hands. And I love the nick out of the edge of the hour and the minute hand. It just looks like a really cohesive design overall. You even get a little bit of loom on those hands. I usually cite Stratton's as being practical, perhaps not quite so much in this case, but it does have 100 meters of water resistance and a little bit of loom. Perhaps you could have done with just a little bit more loom though. By the time we get to the end of the test, everything's fading. Another couple of layers would have been great. Next time, please, Kyle. And there it is, once again, back on my naked, uncuffed seven inch wrist, this time under the studio lights. I gotta say, the case is beautifully machined, lovely horizontal brushing to the upper surface and the side, and a high polish edge running all the way around, high polish bezel as well. 
does rather remind me more though of a business card holder than a watch. And I gotta say, you're gonna have to wear this one quite tight. You want it to sit in position, hence why I've got it even further up my wrist than I normally would to get the head of the watch where you want it just on the crease, just on the, the wrist crease there. Now, obviously the pushers and crown have been moved from the three o'clock surface to the 12 o'clock surface so that it doesn't dig into the back of your arm. But if you wear this one loose, it's gonna flop around. It's just not gonna work. In fact, here is a second pocket shot where I do exactly that. That's one notch looser. It's flopping around all over the place. It kind of kills the effect of the watch. You're gonna have to be very careful about how you size this one and about how you wear this one there for. Moans and niggles. Come on, I don't have to do this today, do I? Look, the glass, I would of course have preferred sapphire, but for 350, I think hardened mineral is acceptable. I can only imagine how much more it would have cost to make a piece of sapphire to that outrageous television pattern. And yeah, the loom, a little bit's okay, but a little bit more would not have gone amiss. But the biggest moan is in the design today. And I guess if you are here at this stage of the video, you're all right with it, or you are one of the people that actually loves it. So let's end this video today with some more footage of the Cuff Buster doing what it does best, busting cuffs. I've never reviewed anything like it, and I doubt very much I will ever review anything like it ever again. So there you have it, undoubtedly one of the most weird, wacky and wonderful watches that has ever graced this channel. Not for me personally, because I just don't own enough of these shirts to justify one of these watches. But if you like the Stratton look, and if you want a watch that will be the talk of the office water cooler, but is typically well made and typically well priced, just like a Stratton, perhaps you might enjoy it. If you like the Stratton look, but don't want a watch that will be the talk of the office water cooler, click here or click here instead. Thanks for watching this one. I'm now gonna go and get changed back into a t-shirt where I belong.